your girl Kateria, aka, AKA Casey Expos. Today we have a special guest. Um, he's not only just a dancer, but he knows all the Latin styles and all the Afro Latin styles. I have the pleasure to pr introduce Jonathan Burke. Hi, how y'all doing? <laughs> Jonathan, what's up? I'm good. How I'm are good. you? I'm good. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for coming here today and tuning in with Are You Ready to Be Exposed? Thank you for the invite. I'm glad to be here. <laughs> so let's start this up. Um, first, how did you get into dancing? I mean, I think that's the question that everybody usually asks is, but we want to know when, when did you start? How old were you? So, I mean, in terms of Latin dance, I yes. think I started learning when I was 19. Um, in terms of any other dance, I was, I mean, my family is from a Jamaican background, so I was always dancing to like, you know, reggae, dance, hey. a little bit of hip hop. Um, but how did I get started for like salsa and all the other styles that I do mm -hmm. today? Um, I bring it back to when I was a junior in high school. Uh, I don't know where I heard it, but I was like, I was looking for music to listen to, um, and I found this one song. It's called Recoge y Vete by a band called... Recoge y Vete vaya. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and it's from this guy named Michael Blanco y su salsa mayor. That's the oh, name wow. of the whole group. The composer is Michael Blanco. Um, and I heard this song, and I was like, whoa, this song is like, it's crazy. Like, it's... It had so many different parts to it, because it was it was a style of music. Yeah. It is a style of music called timba, timba sí. which is popular in Cuba. But the beginning of it starts with a more traditional music style called son. Son. Um, and in this one song, it had elements of son, rumba, and then down to to the the modern day timba. And I think when I heard this song, I was like. This was so new to me. I saw I saw the video and everything. I was like, I, I learned the lyrics. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. That was my first introduction to this this type of music. Um, and ever since, that's been my favorite uh, musician, Michael Blanco su Salsa Mayor. And I heard it, and I was like, yo, this is crazy. And then I learned the lyrics. And I started listening to what they were saying, and it was all about different dances from Latin America. Um, it started off talking about the Cuban soul, which has been one of the most influential Latin music styles ever. It's influenced a lot of different styles of music. Salsa, timba, and even has a little bit of influence on bachata from Dominican Republic. And other styles, too. Even in Haiti, there is even a style of music in Jamaica as well, similar wow. to that. But it kind of died off. So I heard this. And I was like, they're talking about all this music from all these different places. They talked about soul, they talked about rumba, they talked about uh, plena, bomba, mayenato. Oh. I was like, it's talking about everything. Um, Pero todo, everything. And then it ends with, <laughs> el sol es lo más sublime. The, the sol is the most beautiful. Oh, so wow. I was like, okay, I got to figure out what this is. So I kind of started to watch videos, and I was like really excited. I was like, yo, I kind of want to learn what is son, what is all these, what are all these dances. The funny thing is, I watched the videos, I got excited, but I was so nervous because it looked so crazy and like so complicated that I didn't learn how to dance for maybe three years later. Oh wow! Uh, so for three years, you were just listening. To, to like, musica rumba, song, salsa. Yeah, it was mostly a mix of song, salsa, mm -hmm. uh, and timba. Y timba um, so I was listening to Michael Black to Salsa Mayor, and I was listening to some Celia Cruz. Ah. I think those were my main mix, a little bit yeah. of, of uh, Buena Vista Social Club, which is mm -hmm. like a mixture of Cuban artists that became popular in the in the year to two thousand. But they were, they all did traditional Cuban music. Um, so that's what I was listening to, and I was like, okay, I'm ready to take my class. Okay, so I got to my first class, I took it, it was like eight months long, and like, oh, wow. I loved the class, but then I went out to dance once, and the class was very beginner, very basic. Very so I got there, I did my thing, right, I left, and I was like, I'm never going out to dance again. Oh. So how was the experience? Did you was it bad? Did you not pick up what you learned in the classes, or what was it that you felt that oh I'm never going dancing again? <laughs> Nothing. So I went to one of these things called salsa. They're like salsa socials, places where they play just salsa and everybody dances, and they're all people who've taken lessons or from a dance company or things like that. So everybody's amazing. <laughs> so I took this class in the gym of my school, 
And I went there and I was like, okay, basic step, basic steps. Same thing for about four minutes every time I danced. And people were not impressed. <laughs> no, <laughs> not like we're not all. dancing with him anymore. No. He's not. <laughs> I mean, there was, there was one person I was impressed, so I was happy about that. But like, aside from that, everybody, I mean, one of the people I was like, I was like really excited to dance with her. I was like, oh, she's kind of cute. Let me dance with her. And I looked at her <laughs> and she, so her face was like, the whole time she was like, she was like, no, this she is wasn't not interested. Um, and I was like, well, I'm never doing that again. But I kept dancing by myself in my room. I didn't have a partner. Sometimes I'd make my friend, let my friend use, uh, I'd be like, hey, let me use your girlfriend and teach her some dance moves. <laughs> I actually taught her salsa that way, which is funny. Oh, wow. Um, but like, that's what I was doing. I was dancing by myself pretty much in my room mm -hmm. all of my freshman And how year. long did you do that for until you, uh, you started to take dancing more serious i mean at that point you're taking dancing About, serious because you're practicing you want to learn the technique right. but after you know 19 after a few years of you so that was that took like a year so i was a junior in high school when i first heard that song so i was about 17 19. when i was 19 is when i started to take it a little more seriously serious okay. so a friend of mine was like i know you dance house all the time i've seen you dancing in your room so she tagged me in a rehearsal not a rehearsal, a uh, tryout a try, yeah. for a company who was having like a performance team, training team tryout. And I went and, <laughs> and still then I was not good. <laughs> I kind of went, I knew like two or three moves. I had to dance with the boss of the company and I did two or three moves for 30 seconds that I stopped and I said, this is all I know. <laughs> and that's, <it. laughs> that's how I did it. But then afterwards, I talked to her about how much I love Cuban music. How yeah, much I love timba, rumba, son. And she really loved it because in Boston, it's not like a huge thing. People like salsa, but they don't like timba as much. Mm -hmm. They don't like son as much in Boston. Um, so, you know, she saw that and she was like, I, saw, I see you're dedicated. I see you love it. So I'll give you a shot. And she did. And like within two months, I was already performing. Oh, wow. Um, and how did you feel in your first performance? I was nervous for sure. I messed for sure. up. We had a tech rehearsal. Did you mess up the tech rehearsal? Oh, I messed up so bad in the tech rehearsal. Well, that's um, good because that's not in. You know what I mean? I didn't mess up that's in the show. Time. I got that mess up out. You got the, That's what you need. <laughs> you need to release that. And then from there, I think that... And I think it's like in tech rehearsal is great because you also get feedback. Like, you know what? Um, you need to pick up on this. Or you know what? Do this a little bit better. So I think that... That's great that you had your mess up there. Yeah. yeah. I, yes, I was very upset about that. Oh, you were? Why? Yeah. That's well, tech, though. It was for my, you... my first performance at this thing called the Boston Salsa Festival. Huge festival. Oh, wow. It's ran by these two guys, Johnny, um, Andres, um, and a few DJs, um, DJ Hernan and others oh, in the yes. area. And it's huge there's so many people like it was it was my first performance and it was like the big stage like my boss months later she was like that was your first performance i should have never put you up there <laughs> i was like well it's too late you already did, you did. <laughs> and i think with that i kind of lost my shyness of performances um because there's a lot of people there's like i don't know 500 more wow. that's probably a low ball when i think about it but there's tons of people there like instructors thing. from germany italy mexico so international Columbia. yeah international Boston inter uh, I always mess up the wording but it is an international mm -hmm. event and it's some of the best in the world so I messed up during the tech and we had brought two guests from Cuba Joanne and me and they're great instructors they had great energy I messed up there and I was like crap I messed up <laughs> it's not it's not gonna go well during the show but we were the last ones to tech so they let us go again and I did it the second time so okay. That I went through. I continued to trade with Meta Movements. Um, in the next December, I went to Cuba for a week. Oh. That was really exciting. And was this a part of the company, or was this something that you decided to go on your own and so, just kind of explore and learn more about the culture and the dance? So this was actually part of the company. So Meta Movements also runs trips to Cuba, oh, nice. aside from the dance company. So I really wanted to go, and I told her, she was like, I could see you going to Cuba with us. And like, I was like, I don't know. I mean, that's a lot, that's, I don't know. And then I just made the decision one day, I was like, I'm going to Cuba. You go. And you know, I started everything, I did a GoFundMe. Uh, I was really nervous at first. So when I made the GoFundMe, I was like, uh, I don't know if this is a good idea. 
I, I kind of sabotaged myself a little bit at the beginning because <laughs> that was in my mind. So in I was like, mind. whatever. But I got through it. I went to Cuba. And then from that point on, I was like, I know I'm going to be dancing. And I know I'm wow. going to do it for a while. And I know I'm going to, like, especially focus on the Cuban arts. What was something that you took back from Cuba that, you, that made you feel that way? Well, I took back, I think... Was it the culture? Was it the way the training was held that you were like, I'm definitely going to be dancing. I'm definitely going to dance uh, the styles of song, rumba. It was that, uh, but I think, you know, when I was a kid, you know, I wasn't like a popular kid. Mm -hmm. I got teased when I was in elementary school sometimes, you know. Uh, but when I went to Cuba, there was just so much love. Oh, All the love, instructors did love. was give love. And it wasn't like fake, like, oh, I need to make yeah, a buck love. Real -ish, it was like, me? they really think of you as their family. It's like, you add somebody on Facebook now, you're talking to them all the time. They're in Cuba, you're sending them a message. You're like, oh, how's the family? How's this and that? And you guys really connect to each other. Yeah. Um, so it kind of created a, a community for me. And I knew that I could get that community <clears throat> in Cuba. Also in Boston, anywhere else where there's Cuban dance. And people really come together. So I was like, you know, I love this. And then, you know, I learned that I could really do something with this. That's with amazing. This. And then when did you... So I see that you've been performing. How long were you doing the performance until you decided to do your... Either your own choreography, your own teaching? I mean, do you, do you teach? Yes. So okay. I started teaching actually right after that trip. Right after the trip? Right after the oh, trip, wow. I came back. I was like, I want to teach. I want everybody to see what I saw when I was in Cuba. Because it was beautiful to me. So I wanted everybody to experience that. Experience, yeah. So I started teaching right after. Uh, I made... I started making my own choreography recently. I think maybe two years ago hmm. is when I made my, my uh, solo piece. Afro-Cuban solo piece. Um, and that really took... It really took a push for myself. Um, I think I was abroad, actually, so I was away from the dance company. Oh. And I was thinking about dancing so much, and I was kind of disappointed because the dancing scene where I was, I was in Ecuador studying oh. abroad. Uh, <clears throat> it wasn't what I had hoped for it to be, so I was, like, really upset. I was like, I really want to dance. I really want to come back to Boston with something amazing because, you know, even though I'm not having the experience I want to here... Uh, I think I could make something good out of it. So I started working on the choreography. Um, so you got inspired being in a place where there was no inspiration. Exactly. Ah, wow. When, when I feel like I can't be inspired or something, I just dance. I put on music and I just go. Just go. So that, like that's hour, what inspires hours. you, the music. The music, yeah. Um, listening to the beats, the drops, the ups and the downs, the emotions conveyed through the lyrics... I mean, and even just like, not even, if you can tune out all the features of it and just sort of kind of feel the energy of the song, the song. it can direct you. So, and is that how you feel when you dance? You feel like there's energy directing you? Exactly. So each movement essentially means something to you. Right, exactly. Oh, wow. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Like, um, have you ever cried during a dance? Have you ever gotten very angry? Have you ever... Like, when it's a complete, like, crazy zone, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> you can go. I mean, I know, like, um, uh, I'm a dancer as well, and I know that sometimes when I dance certain music, like, I'll start crying or start becoming angry mm -hmm. because I really, like, get into the character. So would you say that you really get into the character when you start dancing your pieces, even if it's yours or someone else's? Right. I agree. I do get into the character, though I think... When it comes to performance time, I'm a little more cautious about that just because I want to be in control. I do I do sort of go into a zone. I try to get into the character when I rehearse the most. I think I know that sounds funny, but for example, I'll be at home and I'll put on a song and I'll just start going. I won't think about it, I'll just do it. And then at a certain point the motion does come up to me. And if it's a sad song, I might cry or I might, you know, start dancing and go crazy, I might just drop to the ground. <laughs> I go through all of that when I rehearse and when I'm training um, so that I'm ready for the stage. And I really feel it, you know, something that's inside is very strong. And then when I go to the stage, I remember all those things that I did. But because I experienced those in a safe space, I feel comfortable tapping into that emotion in front of people. 
Mm, so I, I I go crazy like <laughs> this is why I can't trade I don't like to trade my solo pieces with anybody because I really go all out I do everything like I for certain Orishas for example oh, those yeah. are people it's a certain type of dance Yoruba dance that is done in Cuba oh wow um, can you say that so it's a <coughs> can you say that again a Rupa dance yeah Yoruba Yoruba oh wow um, from Nigeria mm -hmm. um, the slaves from that region of Nigeria from Yoruba land came to Cuba. Well, they didn't come. They were brought they during were slavery. Brought um, and they preserved their religion there. And there's certain dances that they do. Um, and I really go all out where I rehearse these. I really channel uh, what I think the Orisha, which is like a saint or a deity, you okay. might say, in, uh, in their religion. I really try to ch channel that. And if I have the tools necessary to accurately portray that Orisha, for example, there's one called Ogum. Mm -hmm. He's the owner of metal. Oh wow! He dances Ogum. with Ogum. <laughs> His colors are uh, green. <laughs> His colors are green and purple, and he dances with um, a machete oh, or a machete. machete. So if I have something around, I might use it to pretend it's like a mach uh, machete. Uh, anything to really get close to the to the Orisha. Or whatever, and then also any other styles of dance like salsa. I might just start going crazy, footwork, body movement, rumba. Oh, rumba! There's a lot of bounce of that. I'll start going crazy. You know, I add a lot of different movement styling, and I stop thinking and I just do, and then I feel, and I let my feelings guide the movements. I let that all happen in a private and safe space, so that I can take that and feel comfortable doing that on stage. Oh, wow. So that's so, like pretty much the process of, you know, basically letting your emotions out, knowing what they are when you dance the music, when you hear the music. And then when that time comes, you kind of have everything contained in a bottle, but still show that. Because right. I know for a fact that when I um, look at the recent videos that I've looked at, um, I, I see a lot of energy there. I see a lot of control about what you're doing and feelings that you did have. So going you explaining that now i see that in your dance <laughs> yeah which is which is you know cool of course thank you, so thank you. going back to your your dancing in that orish is it orishas 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 yes. um which orisha do you have you danced the most or you dance uh, so which orisha do you i don't want to say favor like favoritize like not, right. not like that but something like you some what's orisha that you connect with I dance uh, Chango the most. Chango is a king. He's based on the third king of the Oyo Empire of Yoruba land. Um, so the story behind him is, you know, is that he was a king and then he died by way of lightning strike. And technically, you're not supposed to talk about that. Oh, okay. Um, and then afterwards, well, <laughs> and then afterwards, <laughs> he becomes an Orisha. And his elements are fire, lightning. He's the Orisha of male sensuality, um, of dancing. He's the owner of the drum. He's also the Orisha of justice. Um, and I don't just say these things like he's this and he's that. It's sort of like these are things we glean from stories, uh, which are also called patakis, uh, about the different Orishas. So I have danced him the most. Um, and when I dance him, it's it's a very powerful feeling. And it really is because he's you... strong. He's strong. Yeah, but he's also smooth. He's not crazy. You know, he's uh, he's strong, but he's also sensual. Ooh. He's a suave. He's a suave. suave. Oh, so are you a suave? <laughs> I'm not going to say anything <laughs> like that. <laughs> That's a little too much. That's a little too much. <laughs> but, oh, wow. So he he's a very powerful... Uh, would you call it Orisha, right? Orisha. Right, Orisha. He's a very, Orisha. He's a very powerful Orisha, but he's also like calm. It's like, what do you say again? What is that saying? Like the calming before the storm or the whatever? The calm before the storm. The calm before the storm, is that? Yeah. No? You can yeah. say something like that. I mean, he's not the storm, though. He's not the storm, but no, he's, you know. That's a different Orisha. That, oh, so who would be who, who would be that Orisha? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, she's the Orisha. Um, she controls wind, storms. Um, she's very powerful. She's also Chango's favorite wife. Oh, Before wow. Before Chango fights, you always hear her th her thunder. Her th oh. So does she unite with Chango in any 
In any of the pataki? Yeah, in any of the pataki. Pakati. Pataki. Pakati. Y yo que soy cubano, man. What the fuck? There are a few stories. Um, I won't get too deep into the details on that. Yeah, do. But there are a few stories where he sees Oya, um, and he sees her, you know, doing her thing, and he's like, and he, he a- wants her. The funny thing about Oya is she used to belong to another, she, well, not belong, but she was the wife of another Orisha, and he kind of went in, and he said, you know, I like, you know, that's the that's the one I want, so. So he took, now, does, is this Orisha happen to be the one that Chungo does not like, that you said the metal? I won't say that they don't the, like each other, but, but they're, they're like a, a, a rival. Like. Right, a rivalry, Ogun. Ogun. Right, so she also used to be uh, with? Uh, with Ogun as a mm-hmm. wife, but Chango kind of swooped in. Swooped her and, and yes. was like, Psst, you mine, basically. Yes. <laughs> Chango gets a lot of upper hands over Ogun often, and that's sort of like and wh- why being in is that Orisha cool? of Justice. Orisha of Justice. Right. Chango is like, not fair. He's just like, whatever he wants, right? Is that how... No, no. Not, no. So he's, I guess it's just who he is that it's, he calls the attention to... He has a special energy. A special energy. That oh. attracts people, especially women. Um, and he does kind of... You know, he's a king, so obviously he enjoys, you know, things like alcohol, dancing, women, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. You know, a lot We've of got Patakis, a Game of Thrones going on right now. <laughs> a lot of gonna... Patakis will start with him doing uh, those types of things, like he's dancing or he's playing his drum or something like that. Um... But he's not necessarily necessarily unfair, um, and if there's ever a case of that, somebody has something to say about that, mm, right? Be, yeah. That'd be another Orisha, Orisha. Up, who's above him. Above so. him. Oh, wow. Now, yeah. I do you see yourself portraying another Orisha, or do you see yourself um, portraying Chango for now, dancing Chango's movement? I think in terms of performance, he's going to be the main Orisha that main I perform, Orisha. but I am going to be performing lots of others. I have a project set up for next year where I'll be uh, performing several different Orishas. Oh, wow. At the same time, is this a solo or this is more... So it's going to be over a period of time. Oh, so I teach, I teach at an event called Club Cubanos that actually runs here in Cambridge. Oh, wow. Club Cubano. Yep. No se te lo pierda. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about that. When when could we go to Club Cubanos and how when you, right. I mean, do, are you there a lot? Yeah. Do you teach? Or? So Club Cubanos is once a month. Once a month, okay. Um, on, I believe, the third or fourth Saturday of the month. Mm-hmm. It varies by the month a little bit. But if you go on the Facebook, search Club Cubanos Boston, you'll be able to find it. Uh, so the way that runs, it starts at like 9.30. There's a class before, which I teach. Um, and then there's a huge party. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, so there's tons of dancing and things like that. So and it's really an amazing event. You know, wow. So I'll be trying to perform periodically in several different Orisha. So I don't want to cut you off, but I do want to put this uh, video because we're actually um, already... Time is up. I'm sorry. I wish we had so much more time so we can, you know, listen to more of what Jonathan has. For Jonathan Bird. actually post this picture um, multiple times on Facebook and on YouTube so um, not picture you sorry uh, videos so you can definitely view it there but I just would like to say thank you thank you for tuning in are you ready to be exposed and thank you for listening to Jonathan Burke's story thank you Jonathan for coming today take care